satisfaction, if you look pleasingly, in other words, if you look pleasingly, if we want to get the favorable glance of the spiritual master, we don't, we don't want to get the furrow of eyebrows and you get out from us.
during Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by a professional reciter cannot actually help us achieve liberation. Krishna Katha is very simple. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As he himself explains, Matta Paratramnanya Kinchidasti Dhananjaya. O Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. Bhagavad Gita 7.7. 7. Simply by understanding this fact that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can become a liberated person. But, especially in this age, because people are interested in hearing Bhagavad Gita from unscrupulous persons who depart from the simple presentation of Bhagavad Gita and distort it for their personal satisfaction, they fail to derive the real benefit. There are big scholars, politicians, philosophers, and scientists who speak on Bhagavad Gita in their own polluted way, and people in general hear from them, being uninterested in hearing the glories of the Supreme Personality of God and Brahma devotee. A devotee is one who has no other motive for reciting Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam than to serve the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has therefore advised us to glorify, to hear the glories of the Lord from a realized person. Bhagavata Purodhya Bhagavata Shtani. Unless one is personally a realized soul in the science of Krishna consciousness, a neophyte should not approach him to hear about the Lord, for this is strictly forbidden by Srila Sanatana Goswami who quotes from the Padma Purana, a Vaishnava Mukodhirinam, Putam Harikatamurtam, Sravanam Naiva Kattavyam, Sarpochistam Yasa Payaha. One should avoid hearing from a person not situated in Vaishnava behavior. A Vaishnava is Navritta Krishna. He has no material purpose. Or his only purpose is to preach Krishna consciousness. So-called scholars, philosophers, and politicians exploit the importance of Bhagavad Gita by distorting its meaning for their own purposes. Therefore, this verse warns that Krishna Katha should be recited by a person who is Navritta Krishna. The Goswami epitomizes the proper reciter for Srimad Bhagavatam of Parikshit Maharaj, who purposely left his kingdom and family prior to meeting death, epitomizes the person fit to hear it. A qualified reciter of Srimad Bhagavatam gives the right medicine, Baba Oshadi, for the conditioned souls. The Krishna conscious movement is therefore trying to train qualified preachers to recite Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita throughout the entire world so that people in general, all parts of the world, may take advantage of this movement and thus be relieved of the threefold miseries of material existence. The instructions of Bhagavad Gita and the descriptions of Srimad Bhagavatam are so pleasing that almost anyone suffering from the threefold miseries of material existence will desire to hear the glories of the Lord from these books and thus benefit on the path of liberation. Two classes of men, however, will never be interested in hearing the message of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Those who are der determined to commit suicide and those determined to kill cows and other animals for the satisfaction of their own tongues. Although such persons may make a show of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam at a Bhagavata Saptaha, this is but another creation of the karmis who cannot derive any benefit from such a performance. The word Pasugna is important in this connection. Pasugna means butcher. Persons fond of performing ritualistic ceremonies for elevation to the higher planetary systems must offer sacrifice, yagya, by killing animals. Lord Buddha Dev therefore rejected the authority of the Vedas because his mission was to stop animal sacrifices, which are recommended in Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. In Dasi Yagya Vidare, Ahaha Shruti Jatam, Sadoya Kradoya Darshita Pasu Katam, Keshava Dutta Purasarira, Jai Vigadi Shahare. Even though animal sacrifices are sanctioned in Vedic ceremonies, men who kill animals for such ceremonies are considered butchers. Butchers cannot be interested in Krishna consciousness, for they are already materially allured. Their only interest lies in developing comforts for the temporary. Translation, glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is performed in the Parampara system. That is, it is conveyed to spiritual master to disciple. But glorification is relished by those no longer interested in the false temporary glorification of cosmic manifestation. Descriptions to the Lord are the right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing repeated birth to death. Therefore, who will cease hearing 
these as glorifications of the Lord. He said the butcher, or one who is killing his own self. Now, uh, this verse actually is coming at the very beginning of the tenth canto, after Parishit begins to praise Sukadev Goswami, uh, and is about to request. Everyone wants to get cured. 
cured, so one should take the cure. No? But if one doesn't think one is diseased, one won't take the cure. <laughs> if you think it's all right, I'm not diseased, I'm very happy as it is, then we won't take the cure. So therefore he says, who will not accept this? Except the Pashubna, the one who kills the beasts. No? Of course, there's two meanings to this Pashubna. One, the literal meaning is butcher, one who kills animals. Butcher. Anyone who kills animals is a butcher. Uh, but of course, it's not only the butcher, it is the person that eats the meat and the person that raises the meat and the cow, etc. All the people involved in the act of killing animals and eating animals, they're all involved, they're all butchers in one sense. And of course, it even goes beyond that. Uh, anyone that commits violence against animals is also Pashuk Nam. Uh, and if we go further, we understand that everybody's Pashuk Nam because we all have to kill in order to survive sooner or later. <coughs> so we're all implicated also. Uh, so, in other words, uh, all of the people in the material world with material consciousness trying to survive and enjoy be happy in this material world, they're all in this category. And they all refuse to take the medicine because they don't think they're sick. They'll take the material medicine to get rid of the material pains, but they won't take the medicine to get out of the material world and stop birth, death, old age, disease, happiness, and distress. They'll take enough medicine to get rid of the distress to get happiness in the material world. They won't take medicine to get rid of the happiness in the material world. They don't want that. So anyway, this is the uh, medicine, the, the cure-all medicine. The material medicine is temporary. And that is why Sri Prabhupada always, he's not so fond of um, helping people get cured of their material diseases and doing charity work like this. Not, not so fond of that. Why? <coughs> because it is all temporary. And we get distracted from the main disease. And if we get too attracted to curing people of their material diseases, then uh, we'll forget about the big disease <laughs> staying in the material world. We're trying to uh, cure people to be happy in the material world. So then we'll forget about that even the happiness of the material world is a disease. So the uh, duty of the real devotee of the Lord, he must always understand that this is the problem, the happiness of the material also as well as the distress. It's also a problem. So we have to get the final cure for the uh, big disease. So what is that cure? It's not, it's not something very difficult, nor is it costly. Uh, for our material diseases, the more complicated the disease, the more costly it is to get cured, the more the medicine, the more the treatment, and the longer it is, the more inconvenient it is also. But for the, uh, this big disease, an all-prevailing disease in the material world that goes on birth after birth after birth, it is not costly at all. It's a very simple cure. But funny, nobody takes the cure. <laughs> and they go on in the material world. So why is it? Because they don't understand that they're even sick. So they don't have no attraction for this cure. So who would reject this cure? Everybody in <laughs> the material world. All the ignorant people. All the people attracted to material enjoyment. Because most of the people, they won't accept this simple cure, which is a cure for everything. <coughs> so the pastimes, the descriptions of the Lord, and the pastimes of the Lord, this is the real cure for everything. Uh, uh, so, it is the Baba, Baba Oshadi, it is the medicine to cure the uh, material existence. Uh, and it is uh, recited or sung by people who are Nivritta Tarsha. Nivritta Tarsha means uh, uh, Nivritta Trishna. Trishna means thirst. When you're thirsty, it is Krishna. It's a thirst for water. But here, the thirst is something else. It is thirst for material enjoyment. That thirst is Krishna. That's 
it's also our disease, by the way. <laughs> that causes bhava, the continued material existence, this thirst, because we have this thirst. And it won't go away. And every birth we get this thirst to enjoy. So, the um, pastimes of the Lord are recited by people that have wiped out the thirst. Nivritta. It's completely vanquished. <coughs> this is recited by people who have uh, curbed the thirst for material enjoyment. So in other words, uh, the recit recitation of the glories of the Lord has to be also done by the proper person. Then it is the medicine. And if it's done by a different person, it does not have the medical effect. Uh, so in other words, it has to be done by a person who's given up his uh, desire for material enjoyment. If it is recited by a person that has material enjoyment, then you won't get the effect. You don't get cured of the material disease. How is it possible? If the reciter is enjoying in the material world and he's reciting about Krishna, how do we expect the people that hear it to get relieved of their <laughs> material desire when the reciter is full of material desire? It cannot happen. Huh? So this is a very subtle thing. And it's difficult for people to understand that. And that is why Prabhupada keeps repeating that you know, professional reciters, useless. Yeah? Very popular in India, you hire somebody to recite the Bhagavatam, particularly the Bhagavatam in North India, particularly, it's very popular, the Bhagavatam Saptaha. For seven days, they will recite the, uh, usually it's the um, Das Avatars, they'll recite the story of the Das Avatars. And people will come and listen. So that it's very nice to hear about the Lord, yes. <laughs> the problem is that most of the reciters are. They're professionals, what we call professionals. They've paid a fee, and they've learned all the verses huh, that they have to learn. They've learned all the other little intricate stories that are going to amuse people. So we've got some courses for this, you know, for Dobbin. A two year course, I think you take. No? And then after you do that, then it's, uh, you can go out, you got a job. <laughs> you, can get, you get the money, and then this is the way you live. You know, we're reciting like this. So yes, and if, and if you're very good at reciting things, some people are good actors, for instance, and recite, they've got good voices, and very dramatic, and they can tell good jokes. Yeah, so they can entertain people very nicely. So they become, people are attracted to this. And they think, oh, well, this is spiritual, so it's beneficial for them. <coughs> so the sentiment is good, because we want to be spiritual, and we want to listen to something about, you know, Mahabharata, or Krishna, or Ramayana, etc. But then, it's very, uh, it's cheating actually because the person who's reciting it actually is still attracted to the material enjoyment. He doesn't want to get out of the material world. He needs the money so he can survive in the material world and enjoy more. So then what is the effect of this on the people that think we're coming and we're getting spiritualized but actually no effect. So it's difficult for people to understand that because it's, you know, it's all about Krishna and but, uh, no effect. This is what Shastra says. And Prabhupada here quotes, of course, from Padma Purana. It is like the um, uh, milk. Milk, we also say, is pure. It comes from the cow, it's pure, good for medicine, so it's good for many things. So, therefore, in all cases, we should be able to drink it. But if the poison of the snake is mixed in there and you drink it, then you cannot. It's not healthy for you. Milk is nourishing and pure. But if you take it with poison in it, it's not going to nourish you. It'll poison you and you'll die or get sick. It's milk, but it's different. Uh, so, uh, topics of Krishna are also like milk. But if the poison is mixed with it, then it does not have the right effect. So what is the poison? The poison is a material desire. So the material desire gets mixed with the topics of Krishna when somebody recites it with material desires and somebody hears it then. The material desires also get transmitted along with the topics of Krishna and they all mixed up. And then the result is no good. So this is a, it's a very <coughs> subtle thing. Uh, because we'll think, oh, like we have, you know, uh, the videos of Ramayana and <laughs> 
Omaha bar and everything else, all nice and spiritual. But then who made it? And why did he make it? Well, he made it for money. He had to make a profit, you know, like that. So then we have the question, is it actually so beneficial after all? And what is the effect on us? Well, uh, uh, so yes, it's popular. The thing is popular like this, the sentiment of people is there to hear. But then if the person who is reciting it and making it and producing it, whatever, they got material desires, then that also gets mixed up with the story of Krishna. We don't get quite the right effect anymore. So therefore, the hearing process is very important. The speaking process is very important. It's not just the scripture, but it's how it comes out. And when we hear it, then we're going to get different effects. And a very, very subtle thing. So therefore, one has to watch who be very careful of who one listens to. So here it says, huh? the Virtu Taishaya These things are recited by people who are the Virtu Taishaya. Uh, they have stopped their thirst for material enjoyment. However, we could say that my bodies also have stopped their <laughs> thirst for material enjoyment. But then, they're also included in the snakes <laughs> as a poison. <laughs> so when my body recites the Bhagavatam, then also is useless, even though he's never to Tarsha. He's also got rid of his material desire. And he gets mukti, and then he's got no material desire. But still it is poison. Ah. So, there's another qualification here. Shrotra Mano Abhirama. Uh, it is enjoyable. And it gives pleasure to the mind and to the ear. So, if a person who is reciting it also actually doesn't get pleasure in the topics at all, like a mind body, I'm not getting pleasure out of reciting about Krishna because he doesn't believe in Krishna. So, therefore, uh, one who recites and who has got rid of his material desires at the same time, he also gets joy and bliss when he recites the topics of Krishna. So that means he's not only devoid of material desire, he's also got attraction for Krishna. Great love of Krishna. He has two qualifications. So that is the qualification of the reciter, actually. He has to have both, not just one. Both. <coughs> if we have uh, uh, attraction to Krishna, but no, <laughs> uh, we haven't withdrawn ourselves from the material world, then again it becomes the kind of false sentiment for Krishna. So the real devotee of Krishna has attraction for Krishna and simultaneously is withdrawn from the material world. So that should be the qualification of a person who is going to recite the topics of Krishna Bhagavatam. In other words, he is a devotee of the Lord. Not a Mayavadi, a Mayavadi also no desire. And he's not a materialist. Or is not a sentimentalist also. He's qualified by attraction to Krishna and detachment from material world. These two things actually uh, are simultaneous. Uh, it's described, you know, we have our little bhakti plant growing up in the seed of faith. And we cultivate it. And you notice when the plant comes up, then what happens? We get two leaves. Two little leaves come out. First two leaves come out. Krishna Chagavari says these two leaves, uh, they may come out a little bit, not simul exactly at the same time, but generally, you know, a little bit, a little bit like that. And they come out and they manifest. This is like the manifestation of two qualities, two things that manifest in bhakti. Sadhana. Anyone know what they are? the 
the structures of Klesha, and the other is Subhada, or the manifestation of Subha, of auspiciousness. Two things happen in the beginning of devotional service, that is Sadhana Bhakti. And then more or less simultaneously. Okay? So they're like the two leaves of the plant manifesting. Um, so uh, Klesha Agni, of course, means destruction of Klesha. Klesha refers to pain, but not only pain, happiness also, uh, material happiness, uh, of pop and punya. The cause of uh, happiness and distress is pop and punya. And the, 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 the cause of that is material desire. And the cause of that is ignorance. Avidya. Yeah. Ignorance of what? Ignorance of Krishna. <laughs> I'm separate from Krishna. I will enjoy separately from Krishna and God. Avidya, I got my desires, I got my actions, pop and punya, and then I get result, happiness and distress. That's that's the sequence of what happens. All this is wiped out by bhakti. That means karma, desires, ignorance is wiped out by bhakti. Not immediately, gradually, but it, in sadhana bhakti, this process begins. So karma gets gradually reduced, desires. Karma is caused by desires. Desires are also wiped out. Desires for material enjoyment get wiped out. Why? Because through bhakti, we are developing a desire to serve Krishna. Without desire for ourselves. So with the desire to serve Krishna, automatically we have to reduce our desire for our own enjoyment. Because when we serve Krishna, we're serving Krishna without material desires, without desire for myself, without enjoyment for myself. So automatically then, we have to reduce our material desires. If we engage ourselves selflessly for Krishna, for his desires, then what, what is the question of our having desires for ourselves? We cannot have both simultaneously. So the more we serve Krishna with selflessly, the more we reduce this desire for our own material enjoyment. Yeah? So that Kama, or the Krishna, gradually reduces. So that is one effect of sadhana bhakti. We call the um, uh, anarta navriti. Navriti, same word here, navrita. Wiping out of anartas, wiping out of desires. Uh, and then the other effect of bhakti, sadhana bhakti is supada. So, uh, suba, of course, means auspiciousness. Auspicious can mean different things. Uh, it means, one of the meanings is that um, we develop all good qualities. Uh, of course, what are good qualities? <laughs> uh, in Bhagavad Gita, uh, the qualities of the devotee are mentioned there, like, you know, patience, mercy, uh, silence. then there's one main quality. <laughs> Without that quality, all the other qualities are also useless. What is the main quality? The main quality. Yeah, surrender to Krishna. <laughs> that is the main quality. <laughs> the main good quality. And all the other qualities are secondary to that. If we have that one, all the other ones will automatically develop. If we don't have that one, even if you develop the other qualities, they're all artificial. So if you surrender to Krishna, that's the best quality you can have. And then all the other qualities naturally develop in the soul because the soul has all wonderful qualities. So it's not punya there, it's naturally developed. So through the process of sadhana bhakti, subhada, we develop surrender to Krishna. A surrender means attraction for Krishna. Attraction for Krishna. Now the meaning of subha is, of course, uh, devotional sukha. We get some we don't get real ecstasy in sadhana bhakti, that's in bhava bhakti, brain bhakti, we get ecstasy. But in, in sadhana bhakti, at least we get some satisfaction, which is not material satisfaction. And the satisfaction comes because we do have some sort of relationship with Krishna, yeah. which is our constitutional position, so that's satisfying. So there 
therefore, in the, uh, even in the beginning of devotional service, that is Sanatana Bhakti, okay, we begin to get rid of our material Krishna, material thirst, and we begin to develop our attraction for Krishna, which is first manifested as faith, and begins to develop the Nishta, Muchi, and Sanatana and Prema. So, two things are going on simultaneously, like two leaves of a plant. So once this, we, we practice sadhana bhakti and these things take place, then one becomes, one becomes qualified to glorify the Lord. And people that hear, they'll get the right effect. But if we don't perform sadhana bhakti, if we don't perform bhakti, we do some other process and we recite Bhagavatam, this won't take place. We may become my bodies and develop the no more material desire, but we don't get the other part that is attraction to Krishna, so therefore it's also useless. Or we may have material desires uh, and uh, also no attraction to Krishna. <laughs> That's even worse. Than that. <laughs> and then uh, the hearing of Krishna will be so mixed up with material things that we'll never uh, develop attraction for Krishna, nor will we develop detachment from the material world even. So, of course, if the Maya body recites Bhagavatam, at least through that, one will become a little detached from the material world. He won't become attracted to Krishna. He won't surrender to Krishna, but you'll become detached from the material world. That much. If you hear from a materialist, then you won't become detached from the material world, nor will you get a real attraction for Krishna. <laughs> uh, so, therefore, the uh, we have to hear so the, the topics themselves are very wonderful. They are medicine, but they require the uh, proper person. And then they have very, very great effect. Um, Anuvada, of course, also, um, uh, Prabhupada says here, uh, this is performed in the Parampara. Glorification of the Supreme Personality of God it is performed in the Parampara system. So we don't see that word mentioned here, but I think it comes from Anuvada. Anuvada. Yeah. Vada speak, Anu is to follow. So one speaks following after somebody else, not independently. In other words, we hear from somebody, according to that thing we speak. We don't invent our own meanings to things. We don't invent our own process. Yeah. So we follow a tradition. That is called the Param Param. So if we invent our own method, we don't have a uh, we don't follow Param Param, then what is the value? So therefore we hear. By following a Param Para, we will develop a practice, a proper practice. We'll get a right philosophy. So therefore, we'll follow the process of bhakti will go nicely. And we'll develop a detachment from the material world, and we'll develop an attraction. But if we don't have the right system, we don't have the right rules and regulations, we don't have the right guidance, then it won't happen. So therefore, the wrong process is very important. So Pariksha Maharaj is saying, of course, Pariksha Maharaj is so qualified, hearing all the time <laughs> uh, the topics of the Supreme Lord. And he, he's hearing so much, he's so attracted to hearing, he forgets about his material thirst and hunger. In seven days he's fasting, but he doesn't feel the pangs of hunger and thirst in those seven days because he becomes so attracted to the topics of Krishna, the topics of the avatars, <coughs> the topics of the Bhagavatam. So he's a quali qualified hearer. And the qualified reciter is also there, in the form of Sukadeva Goswami. And at the beginning of Bhagavatam, it is said that the uh, Bhagavatam is like uh, the ripened fruit of the tree of Vedic knowledge. Uh, um, it's a, the Vedas are like a tree, and all the scriptures are like a tree, a uh, desire tree. And uh, a desire tree is such that whatever you want, you get from it have a desire, a tree will fulfill it, like the same as a Chintamani stone, a uh, wish fulfilling stone, you get stone and you rub it and you get all your desires fulfilled, so the tree is like that also, so the Veda
Vedas are also like that. Whatever you want, you can get from the Vedas. If you want material things, you can get it. You follow karma Kanda, you can get your material desires fulfilled. If you want good health, you can get that. If you want money, you can get that. Worship certain devotees. If you want uh, power, you can get that. If you want a higher position, you can elevate yourself to Svarga Loka or higher. You follow the Vedas. The Vedas will give all this to you. If you want mukti, get rid of your body. The Vedas will give that to you. You, you follow the Upanishads. If you want to go to Vaikuntha, that will give. The Vedas will also give that. So whatever you want in the material world, you can get through the Vedas. You follow the process, you can get. So it's a desire tree. But of course we know there are higher, superior things on the tree and lesser things on the tree. So the, 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 the final, the, high, the most precious thing in the Vedas, of course, that's the most elevated thing, that is the, the sweetest fruit, the best fruit of all. Yeah, that's the best fruit. <laughs> That, so that is the Bhagavatam. It is the final, and after all the Vedas and Quran, Upanishads and Puranas and everything, then the final fruit of all that's on the tree is the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavatam. And that is the, uh, gives the final result. Uh, so of course the fruits, you said very, you can get different fruits if you want them, but the intelligent person, he will go for the best fruit. Yeah? But of course, the best fruit is also the highest on the tree. <laughs> so it's a little bit difficult to get. But at the same time, it's also the sweetest fruit. And it's very special also because it doesn't have a seed. There's no, um, there's no skin and there's no seed. In other words, it is not mixed with uh, karma and yan and all other distracting elements points out directly who is God and points out the process of devotion and it doesn't talk about other things that get you all mixed up so without seed without skin it is all pure sweetness and particularly of course can't count on the description of Krishna but the thing about it is that uh, not only is it sweet but it becomes sweeter if that is possible, because as we say, when it is recited properly, it is good. It's recited by a person who has no material desire, one who has a great attraction for Krishna. But then, even greater than that is one who has great relish for Krishna, greatest relish for Krishna. So Sukadeva Goswami was the one who really had taste for Krishna, more than Vasudeva. That is why we don't glorify Vasudeva so much as Sukadeva Goswami. Because Sukadeva Goswami relished more than anything to have time to Krishna. It would be financially an eternal resident of Raja. So therefore he can relish as much more and experience as much more than anyone else. So when it comes from his mouth, then it becomes very, very attractive. And therefore, Pariksit Maharaj is glorifying huh? Sukhamakad. It comes from the mouth of Sukha. Sukha, of course, means Sukadeva Goswami, also means the parrot. And the legend goes that when the green parrot with the red beak pecks on the mango, the mango becomes sweeter than it was before. <laughs> Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's, the <laughs> that's how the legend goes. <laughs> and so Sukadeva Goswami, when he eats the mango of Srimad Bhagavatam, it becomes even sweeter. So, um, Bhagavatam is very special, and um, it is recited by Sukadeva Goswami, so then it becomes very, very, very attractive, uh, very special. And uh, Pariksit Maharaj was the hearer of all this, and said he was uh, relishing it, and he was a qualified hearer. Even the hearer has to be somewhat qualified. <coughs> and the hearer is particularly Totally materialistic. Also, he will reject. He won't even be attracted. He will be they like the Pashugan. <laughs> they will hear, but they will not accept anything. They will. They will. Then they will walk away. They will not want to listen. Uh, Pariksit was <laughs> wanted more and more. He didn't want to. Uh, he was not distracted by hunger and thirst or anything. He simply wanted to hear more and more about Krishna. So he was a highly qualified listener. He had developed attraction already, and then the attraction.
attraction when he heard, he got more attraction, more attraction, more attraction. Because it is the mango, this is sweeter than the mango. So the more he tasted it, the more he wanted it. So this is the nature of Ayodhya when we have a qualified reciter and a qualified hearer. Then we get an actual, uh, we get actual realization, an actual value, an actual spiritual um, quality arising. Uh, so this is the system. We have a qualified speaker and a qualified hearer. And then we get a very good result. The speaker becomes more enthusiastic to recite, and the hearer relishes more, and he becomes enthusiastic to hear more. And this combination is very, very good. Uh, very good spiritual advancement this way. Uh, so therefore we have the Bhagavatam. Uh, fortunately we have uh, uh, the version of Sukhdev Goswami. And of course more fortunate is we have the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it's he who glorified the Bhagavatam more than anything else. Uh, it is the essence of Vedic literature. It is commentary on the Vedanta Sutras. And the Vedanta Sutras are the summary of the Vedic knowledge, and the end product of the Vedic knowledge. And this is the commentary on it. So this is the explanation of what is the final goal of the Vedas. Um, uh, but not only that, uh, he actually. Uh, demonstrated by his life and his teachings uh, the how to be attracted to Krishna, uh, how to experience love of Krishna. He came into the material world himself, of course, to experience the love of the devotee of Krishna as Radha and uh, display that, experience it that experience it. And uh, we get the mercy of uh, Lord Chaitanya to appreciate that, in other words, to appreciate that experience of love of Krishna, which was essentially experienced through Bhagavatam. <coughs> and Lord Chaitanya would listen to the Bhagavatam all the time. And then he would experience uh, ecstasy like a devotee. So we're coming in Lord Chaitanya's line, the, uh, the Gaudiya Sampradaya. So we, this is how we get our Bhagavatam, which coming through Lord Chaitanya. Uh, so it is uh, a very elevated from from comes to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and coming down to the present day. So we should take this message very seriously and learn it, study it, and relish it. And then we get great advantage. This is Bruce who's done great advantage. Okay, any questions?
uh, do some austerities at least, control their senses to some degree, follow some dharma. It's better than not following dharma at all. But it's not the highest. <laughs> the one who is more intelligent should see what the highest thing is. So that is why uh, Prabhupada is talking to the highest people. Okay, this is all useless. <laughs> For lower people, no. They cannot accept that. How oh, do they can practice? But the one who is intelligent, yes, it is useless.
done. And this this observation was made by somebody who was uh, um, experimenting. They um, they tried to develop parapsychology in a scientific way um, in the CIA <laughs> to use for spying techniques like that. So they developed techniques for you know going out of your body and logging into other places. You know, going traveling distance and observing things, and coming back and reporting things on Russia, wherever you want to go. And in the, in the process, they discovered you could go into the past also. So this is a description of one person. It's like a big library that you can connect with by thinking with your mind, and you can enter into these different events and see them happen in the past. Like, but they're like in the present. It's like a virtual, 3D virtual library or something. You can go into it and experience different events, observe them. And then he said, oh, OK, then we'll try the future. So they tried the future also. So yes, you can some extent know the future. Um, certain things are more or less definite, other things are a little bit vague. And he gave the example, it was like um, a clay statue, you're making something out of clay, you know, and you start making the form, and then you, some things are definite, you start making the face, you know, you put the face on like that, but other parts are still unformed, it's like an unfinished statue. <laughs> so that's what the future is like, it's like an unfinished statue. <laughs> and some parts are more clear, and some parts are less clear, like they're not quite fixed yet. Like that. Other things are more definite. So usually the things which are closer in the future are more definite, things you get further away are less definite. Yeah. So in other words, as we go on and we do think activities, then it makes things more definite. <laughs> yeah. So that was his analogy. Thank you. 
of that in the womb, the uh, fetus does respond to external stimuli. And it can react to things also outside. And even the mother can communicate with the child inside and they can get reactions from the child inside the womb to certain things. Yeah. Uh, so of course in um, Ayurveda they have different things you do when the mother is pregnant and stuff so that's favorable for the development of the child. And then we have some scars um, to help out also to keep the mentality of the mother peaceful. And then there's always a reading and recitation of the names of the Lord and the pastimes of the Lord. So this all helps the child, even though it doesn't you know, maybe you think other child's too small and can't think but helps out. <laughs> Who was listening? <laughs> he chased the parrot all the way 